Hi everyone. It is <laughs> I am going to be doing a fun video talking about all of my favorite slash least favorite movies, uh, makeup items that I've discovered, enjoyed, hated over the years, just for fun. Special shout out to my friend Adri. Thank you so much for this idea. I know I look a little messy right now, but we are going to get ready. So let's get into it. Okay, I'm burning a candle today, so if you hear some flickering, it's a candle. Um, this one is called Love You Loads. It's kind of like a like laundry-inspired, like woodsy, warm scent. It's really nice, and it's a little bit cold today, so it's just gently burning. I've created a long list of all of my favorites, some honorable mentions, and then my least favorite uh, make a product from each category, at least the categories that I use. As I discuss, I'll apply my makeup and then, you know, just sit back and relax. You can do your makeup, you can just listen while you clean, whatever you want to do. But when it comes to eye primer, I've, I've tried a good amount. I feel like there are some that really stand out and some that really don't, at least over my time putting eye primer on. Um, so, um, I'll start with the honorable mentions. Oh, hello. You heard me talking? Ow, ow. It's hurting me. Honorable mentions, I would say the Too Faced eyeshadow insurance is really good. I feel like it helps the longevity of eyeshadow. It doesn't interfere if you have like dry skin on your eyes. Um, I would say it's like a, just like a standard, simple eyeshadow primer. Um, I went through one entire tube of it, which took ages. And I thought to myself, like, okay, I'll, I'll buy another one. And then I think I got another one for free from Sephora when I worked there. So I just never went back to it. And I'm glad I didn't because I ended up finding another one I liked better. I would say the Fenty eye primer is also a, like a very similar texture um, an effect as the Too Faced, but the Fenty has a little tint to it, a little bit of like a creamy nude tone. My least favorite I've ever tried in this particular category, I couldn't think of one that I hated. I would just say for eye primer, this is my least favorite, and it would be the MAC Prime, Primer Pot, MAC Pot. I have one in my drawers. And I like the idea that it's like a little waxy. It's got that, you know, I've got the one with color to it. Um, so it evens out. However, I also find that it just, it just like, it doesn't prevent my creasing like others do. If anything, it'll still crease with it. It feels a little too heavy on my eyes. Um, maybe if I was younger, it would work perfect, but I think now it, it just is a little too rich. So that's my least favorite. Um, my absolute favorite I've ever tried are the Urban Decay primers. And I've mentioned this in almost all my videos. Um, I think the traditional one is great. The anti-aging one is my like go-to for just about anything. And then right now I'm going through the Eden one, which is like the tinted one. Um, and I love that it's thin. It prevents creasing and it makes the colors just pop more so for me the Urban Decay is my favorite. Lately I've been applying my eye primer first and then I've been going into tight lining right away so that's how I'm gonna apply it today. So for the eyeliner pencil category first off the honorable mentions the Sephora collection um the colorful contour eye gel pencils those I think are excellent Next one I would recommend to like a friend or like customer would be the Marc Jacobs highlighters. Those are twist up gel liners. They have a little end that you can like sharpen. Um, those I would say would have been my favorite maybe a long time ago until, until I just got too lazy to work so hard to remove the product at the end of the night. They are just so dang hard to get off. Um, excellent for longevity and creaminess, but man, you will still have like remnants of that one for a while. So 
really good, but with like a little setback. My two least favorites, I decided to come up with two for this one. The Makeup Geek uh, retractable liners, I think, are quite, quite ungood. They are creamy and like they're easy to apply, but they don't last. They come off really easily, and I noticed my actual pencil, that like the twist up, um, it just got dry really quickly, more than any of my other retractables. So I was disappointed in that because it was highly recommended by I think Raw Beauty Christy, but I think the recommendation was for the like older formula, and then this the newer one just did not compete. So did not like that, would not recommend. And also the Elf retractable liner. Oh my gosh, so bad. I think it's only like $3 and a lot of other e.l.f. stuff is good, but this one, it like, you put on the back of your hand, you're like, oh, that's so nice. It's like a, just a very soft, creamy pencil. And then you try to put it on your eyes and nothing comes off. Like, there's no pigmentation unless you are pressing incredibly hard, which is not something I ever want to do. And so I ended up just throwing it away because... Unless I was like lighting a match underneath of it to like get it hot, I just, I couldn't deal with that. So those two I did not care for. My top recommendation, one I would buy again, one I would buy all the colors, um, would be the Charlotte Tilbury, the Rock and Coal Iconic Liquid Eye Pencil. I don't know why it's called a liquid. It's a pencil. Maybe because it's so creamy, it's like a liquid. Um, this, what I love, is that it has the has the color payoff, the richness, the ease of application, and on top of that, it'll last through like watery eyes. Um, you can smudge it out, you can build it up, inner rim, on the lash line, whatever, like it'll be there. And I wore this to a wedding a while ago. And even like through tears and laughing, like it was still on. And so I have um, like a dark gray color and then I also have like, um, like a cranberry color and both are excellent. And I would absolutely buy the brown and the black. So that would be my favorite. Okay, next category is eyeshadow palette. And I've been very fortunate to have a lot of eyeshadow palettes in my lifetime. Over, over the last year, really, I really just realized I did not need as many that I had. Um, at the time I just wasn't using them and I also got into like this set of this like mindset almost where I just felt guilty for having all these things that I wasn't using that I paid money for and you know it kind of changed my perspective on like on shopping for makeup in general. Um, I ended up reselling my gently used palettes on Poshmark Poshmark um if like you know I had hardly touched them which was the case for a lot unfortunately um and I certainly didn't get back the amount of money that I spent but it was enough for me to feel like a little better about it and since then I kept the ones that I really loved and I, um, I depotted them. So I put the palettes on my little, I have like a little warming table that melts the glue and then I took out the pans and then I built like basically my own palettes. Um, and so it's been my two palettes that I have that are like pre-made for me. Um, and then since then, I have ha I've added two more to my collection from uh, Shy Bear Cosmetics because my my friend sent me one, and then I wanted to try another one. Oh, balls! There's glitter in here. Okay, well, we've got a little glitter. Oh well. Um. It's fine. So, anyways. These are palettes that I would, that I'm mentioning that I've tried before several times and I know my feelings on them and that's all I have to say. Okay, so my two honorable mentions. These are two palettes that today I would buy, you know, sure, I would buy them, um, in my case, rebuy them, 
I would also recommend them to like a friend and or like family member who like just needs a good recommendation and um, I think they've kind of lasted in style over time they're because they're on the older side so the first honorable mention is the Huda Beauty New Nudes palette I really liked that palette and I think the reason why I ended up uh, getting rid of it was because I just didn't feel inspired by it anymore and I think about it now and I'm like oh I still like the color palette I just felt like every time I was using it I was using like the same four shades that I really liked and not the full palette um, but you know if I had like an endless gift card of money for Huda Beauty like sure I'd pick that one up again my other honorable mention is the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette and I know that's such like an outdated palette but I think it's really like stood the test of time because people still wear those neutral cool tones those mattes those shimmers the dark the light that color palette I think is just really flattering on so many people and I really loved it I think that was my very first eyeshadow palette ever and I was gifted it for Christmas once from my aunt and I I cherished it until the point where like colors were super panned palette uh some of the p pans were like falling out and I just couldn't you know it was not really usable anymore um but if I was in the market to rebuild my collection with like a nice cool palette that would be one for sure that I would pick up again now the one palette that I bought that I was deeply disappointed with was the Jaclyn Hill vault collection it was like a series of four palettes in it really enjoyed her first like Morphe palette um, the quality the shade range that kind of stuff and then I think I was so happy to get the vault collection that when I actually got it and used it I was just disappointed by the the fact that it wasn't the same quality um, and that kind of like was like the first step in me feeling you know had by like Jacqueline because up until that point I was a few years ago I was so deeply like enamored with all her recommendations and her personality and then I think at that point once I tried them it was just so disheartening to have to like throw them away because it was too late to return them to Morphe and I don't know I, I held on to them for a long time thinking like oh maybe they'll work later maybe they'll work later um, no, they didn't, and, you know, just sad to, like, think of myself having spent that money with so much hope and, like, fun in my mind and be so disappointed. On the other side, my favorite, my favorite palette that I would gift to just about any person I know who wants, like, a good eyeshadow palette would have to be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. That one, I think, I had, like, one for my personal use and one for my professional kit because I was so confident that it would work with with everyone for everything. It could be for like a fashion photo shoot, it could be a bridal trial, it could be like for my sister's prom. Like it was the color the color selection and performance was so excellent. Um I ended up depotting my own personal one and uh adding it to my little uh like custom palette that I made um but if I ever you know join back into the makeup pro independent field I would absolutely go and pick that up again because I just feel so confident in it also I don't really know what look I'm going for today I'm mostly just like doing whatever I want so I hope that's okay with you when it comes to eyeshadow single like a cream um I've actually tried quite a handful of like the potted eyeshadows some honorable mentions um the hourglass scattered light uh eyeshadows I think those are really really great they're sparkling they're dazzling you can make them very soft or very very rich and pigmented and um the color selection is really interesting they're kind of like 
uh, just like jewel tone, so really great. I feel like the issue I have with Hourglass at the moment is just like their lack of inclusivity with a lot of their products. So I'm, I've kind of, you know, shied away from buying their products in the last year or so, but I still appreciate the ones that I have. The Stila Magnificent Glitters, Magnificent Metal Glitters, I think that's what they're called. I just think those still are truly so beautiful, so sparkly. All the ones I've had have all gone dry, so I don't have any anymore. Um, but those I think are just so beautiful. They don't fall down. They're easy to apply, great range of color. So I love those still. Um, my least favorite cream eyeshadow would be the Super Goop SPF eyeshadow. It comes in like three colors. I foolishly bought one thinking like, oh, my eyelids need sunscreen and I don't put sunscreen on my eyelids. This eyeshadow is going to be so great. And what I didn't even consider was that the eyeshadow was going to be really bad. <laughs> the one I have is kind of like um, an opalescent -y, like white pearl. And like on the back of the hand, it looks really pretty. But as soon as you put on your eyes, it gets kind of wrinkly and messy and it just does not look so great anymore. So just a little sad that I ended up getting it. I still have it just in case. I don't know. I'm sure it's going to expire soon because it's a cream and it's an SPF. Um, but that one I just highly do not recommend. Um, and then my absolute favorite is the one I'm putting on. This is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is called their Eyes to Mesmerize. Um, and now this one is in the shade Marie Antoinette, which I think has actually been renamed since I've had mine. Um, and I just love these. I love that they don't look thick. They don't look too glitzy. They kind of go with everything. Like I can put this as a base. I can put it on top. I can put it like really, really spare or really, really rich. Um, it's really easy to make it look incredible without having to do a lot of work. And so these, I would absolutely love to get more of these in different colors. Um, but I'm hesitant because it takes so long to go through them. I think I've had this one for a year and a half and I use it regularly, maybe like once a week and it's supposed to expire after six months and I still have a ton of product in there. And so I'm just hesitant to buy any more. Maybe if they were tinier, I would get more colors, but for now just have this one and I love it. I highly recommend it, would gift it, absolutely. Okay, next up, liquid liner. Um, so my two honorable mentions, first one would be the very underrated Clinique Pretty Easy Liquid Pencil, or Liquid Liner. It reminds me a lot of my favorite liner. Um, it has a brushed tip, very black, very inky, easy for precision, easy to build up, doesn't dry out quickly. Um, I accidentally stumbled upon it once I think at work when a customer was telling me how much they loved it and I was like oh that's interesting and I ended up like playing with it on the back of my hand and I was like okay I'll, I'll have to try this in time and when I needed to buy another liner I tried it and I really liked it I think I I wouldn't repurchase it because I don't love Clinique as a brand and that's just like me personally um so I wouldn't want to buy it from them but if someone were to have gifted it to me, I'd absolutely use it. And I'd use it until it's dry, which surprisingly, I, one pencil or one liquid pen took me like three months to go through, which is really unusual for liquid pencils, liquid pens. <laughs> My other honorable mention when it comes to liquid liner is from Tarte. Um, it's the Tartist Double Take Liner. It's a double-ended pencil. rather pen. One side it has the liquid uh, felt tip applicator and on the other side is like a twist up pencil. So it was really novel in that sense but that absolutely has the inkiest uh, liquid applicator that I've ever tried for an eyeliner and I think it's excellent for like a very bold fast wing or even line. 
However, because it's so inky, I did notice like when I would go into the inner corner, it would transfer really badly right down here. And so it just wasn't perfect, but I loved their brown shade and their black shade. So I would, I would get those again. Um, my least favorite that I've tried would probably be from Hourglass, the Hourglass Voyeur Liquid Eyeliner. That one to me was just so ordinary. It, it dried out quickly in the applicator. It wasn't remarkably inky or black enough. Um, if my eye would get a little watery or teary, I could like smudge it right off. And it was just very expensive for what it was. So that one I would not recommend. I wouldn't use again. I'd be disappointed if I got it again. And of course for my favorite, I mention this one all the time. This one is from M Cosmetics. I have the brown and the black. I've gone through probably three of each consecutively. So from the first time I bought it, I have not purchased another liquid liner since then because I'm just so happy with it. I love how long it lasts. I love the ease of application. I love that it's a vegan formula. Um, I love the price point. And of course, this tube will last me pretty much as long as the Clinique one, which is about three months. And that to me is just exactly what I'm looking for. And I highly recommend and would gift. So love this one. My next step is going to be my concealer. Um, I, I have to be frank. I haven't been a huge concealer user my entire life. I feel like I've only really used it in the last three or four years or so. Um, I've been just really fortunate enough to not have really a lot of darkness under my eyes, but now I use it more so just to look like not as tired. I guess everyone does that, but I mean, I, I just use it for like a boost. I don't use it because it's like a necessity and I can't live without it. So. My honorable mentions, the first one is the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. Um, and I actually mean the original one. They came out with like a big thick tube one and that one was okay. But I really liked the original Born This Way Concealer. It came in like a skinnier, longer tube. And the reason I liked it so much was because the fair tone that I used had a teensy bit of peach to it and so it kind of canceled out a bluish purple tint and brightened underneath. And um, I think at this point they don't make it anymore because they, they have the newer one instead. And the newer one is fine. It's just much more extreme coverage than I prefer. And so I just liked that particular part of the original. Other honorable mention is the very classic, the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I do really like that formula. The texture is very thin. The, um, the formula lasts a long time under the eyes without creasing. Um, I think the price point's a little high, but I think that's also because like a staple product now, and so many people know about it that they can get away with a higher price. Um, and their shade range is excellent as well, I have to say. My least favorite concealer I've ever tried is probably the ColourPop concealer. I don't remember what it's technically called, but that was, oh man. I, uh, again, Robina Christie talked to me into it. She was raving about it for practically years. She just loved it all the time, like under eyes, as a base for her eyeshadow. Like it was like flawless to her. So I was like, well, she can't be wrong. You know, it has to be good. And I picked it up and it was my least favorite one I've ever tried to this day because it felt thick, it would look dry, it would crease horribly under me, and I don't use concealer as an eyeshadow primer, but I would try it just because she loved it so much, and it was not it was just not good. So although it's affordable and they have a good shade range, I, I wouldn't pick it up again and I, I wouldn't recommend it. For my top choice, it's actually the one that I've been using lately, the Kosas brand concealer. I think the technical name is something like eye cream infused something concealer. I just like this one because it it doesn't look like a really heavy application. It doesn't immediately settle into lines. It's so easy to put on and I feel like no matter what other products I'm using, this always looks good. And although I've only been using it for maybe a month or so, I just know right away that it's it's so much better than all, a lot of other ones I've ever tried, and I can see myself reproaching this, seeing this one over time too. 
Okay, when it comes to the foundation category, I have a lot to say. I would say of all of the categories of makeup, that foundation is just the one that I am super well versed in. I feel confident in it. I feel like if someone needed a lot of help, like I, I would be there for that person. Like I, I love foundation and complexion products really sincerely. And so I've tried so many, both that have been gifted to me and ones I've just sampled and ones that I've purchased with all my own money, of course. So I will say similarly to eyeshadow palettes, I have downsized my collection immensely to my relief. I think I was just really stressed at some point. I was, I was stressed because I think I had like 30 to 40 different foundations in my drawer at one time. And it just felt, it, it, at one point it felt like I still wanted more. And that was worrisome because it was like, oh, I'm, what am I looking for? Like, how will I know when I have found the perfect, you know, foundation for me? And I think that was my problem was I kept like telling myself like, oh, there's going to be one even better. Like there'll be one even better than this one. And I think what I found is that. I, I needed to just be satisfied with what I had and use it before getting another. And so I, uh, I had so many that had only been used two or three times that I, I used, um, the service called Glambot that, uh, takes, like you ship them a minimum, I think of like 20 makeup items and they basically resell it for you. Um, but they give you like a, a sum of money once they receive it and check it. That way you just don't have to go through and sell each item one by one. They do it on like their mass website. And that was perfect for me when I had this like epiphany because I just, I wanted to get rid of them, but I didn't want them to go bad. And I didn't have enough friends that are my same skin tone to give it to, which is the tough part about foundation. That each person has their own color so it's not like a lipstick or an eyeshadow palette that you can just give to any one person it has to be their perfect match and so what I found out is that there just was no one in my life that could benefit from my hoard of foundations so anyways I gave them to Glambot I got my money it was very very little compared to everything I spent but much better than having them just go into the garbage and so my point is, as of right now, I think I only have four foundations and I don't think any of them, let me see, none of them have made, the ones that I have in my list are not on my faves slash hates. <laughs> so although I am content with the ones I have in my collection now, I don't think I will repurchase any of the ones I have and instead we'll go through these and then later purchase the ones that I know I really like. So anyway, okay. Honorable mentions for foundation. Number one, the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. Excellent, super long wearing, thin in texture, great shade range. Annoying part is the uh, packaging. It sounds just, if you look it up, you'll see it just, it's a mess. It's bulky. It, doesn't work properly. That was its downfall, truly. Uh, next top recommendation, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Liquid Foundation. That's one that I would apply to brides, special day. Um, I think that one just truly enhances natural skin without looking like you have makeup on. And although I used it for those special occasions, I think it also translates beautifully in real life. And that one is tricky because it's expensive and you have to really go in store and try it on to see what shade you have or shade you match but if you can find it sensational if you like a more like light to medium coverage beautiful <laughs> one of my super old time favorites was the Estee Lauder double wear foundation completely different spectrum of coverage and finish that one is a super full coverage um, a very soft matte finish and meant to be like a waterproof sweatproof formula 
and I'm thinking about it now going you know would I buy it again and yes I think I would but that's another one you really need to go in store and try because the coverage is so rich that it's very easy to get a wrong color that might look good in a swatch but once you put it all over your face you kind of have a disconnected body face thing going on but I still recommend it. Uh, my last honorable mention is the It Cosmetic CC Cream. I just remember going through that whole tube and enjoying every application. Um, I would say it's a medium, but you could build it up formula. It has an SPF 50. It looks a little radiant, but can be set with a powder. Um, I think the bad part was that it had like 12 colors and not everyone had a color in it. And so it was a hard one to recommend to customers, but I personally really liked it and I can see myself getting it again. Maybe if I went on like a vacation or something, I would bring that along um, and feel good that the extra SPF over my own like regular one is just added. So those are my four honorable mentions. My two least favorites that I've tried for me personally. Number one, the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte. I'll keep it short and sweet. It smells weird. It's too dry and I can't find a perfect color. The Huda Beauty Faux Filter is my number two least favorite and I've heard that they've reformulated so maybe the newer one is a better one now um but that one also smelled I wouldn't the Fenty one I thought smelled weird the Huda Beauty one smelled bad it was super strong foundation like someone had poured like equal parts foundation and perfume and it was it wouldn't dissipate neither the Fenty nor the Huda and a bad smell and a foundation will instantly turn me off personally and I can't be convinced to use it again um the Huda one also made me look old it would settle into like my like aging areas and added with a setting powder was a disaster because it just made me look like I was really, really trying and it, it like if I like accidentally scratched my nose or something, a part would come off and I'd have like a little bit of red skin. <sighs> just too much. However, I did have a great color match in it. It just, everything else wasn't good for me. Okay, now for my favorite foundation. This took me a long time to, to settle on. Part of me is still convinced that I don't have a favorite foundation, and I'm okay with that. The other part of me is like, ooh, I, I finished my bottle of this a while ago, and I kind of wish I still had it. And that, to me, makes me think, like, oh, that makes maybe it was a really good one after all. So I'll just mention it. The L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. Wow, that was so, such a good foundation because it was super watery, thin in texture, an easy pump uh, <laughs> packaging, super affordable drugstore price, and it would wear, like I could wear it to Disneyland through like sweat and like water rides and it would still be on. Um, it covered up my redness and like discoloration without looking thick and it just, it didn't feel like I was wearing a lot of makeup. Um, my one teensy critique is that the color I had was a little too yellow. And so I'd usually have to like mix it with like other things to look balanced. But because of all those other reasons, I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. Um, and I would rebuy it again. Okay, next. Contour slash bronzer in a non-powder formula. So my, I actually don't have a ton of experience in this category. Um, I, I've maybe only tried less than five total in that, you know, genre of makeup. And so I don't have a, a ton of feedback for like, you know, options. Um, that being said, my honorable mention for a cream bronzer would be the Milk Makeup, um, I think it's called their Matte Cream Bronzer. It's in like a stick and I really enjoyed that stick. 
um, and I would rebuy it, but I would rebuy the mini version because the long one I had for maybe a year past when it was supposed to expire just because I wasn't running out of product even with consistent use. And so that just tells me like, that's great. There's so much product, but it was just, it was just too much. And so <laughs> I would definitely buy it again, but in a mini size. Um, I loved the color because they had like a lighter one and a deeper one. And the color was really great to just kind of look like a little bit bronze without looking like excessive. And in this category, my least favorite would have to be the Charlotte Tilbury. I have it here next to me. The Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. I don't know. I cannot get this to look good on me. And I've tricked myself into thinking it looks good just because like everyone raves about it, or at least they did at one point. Um, I trimmed off the little like applicator. It's like a, a sponge that comes with it. You twist it, you squeeze, liquid comes out, you twist it, close, and then it's off. This just ends up looking so patchy on me. And I think it's always funny when, when creators describe formulas as patchy because usually on camera you can't really see what they're talking about and I don't think I've ever heard anyone have that same issue with this and so I used to think like oh it's just my application it's you know maybe it's just my skin and I just think at this point I've tried it so many times that that's just my least favorite one so I don't recommend it now for my favorite I am a huge, huge fan oh, I just put it away, of the Fenty Beauty Matchstick. Um, this one is in the color Amber. Um, I, I just like it. I just like that it looks really subtle. It's really easy to put on. If I want more, I can add more and it's not going to look crazy. I can put less and it just looks, you know, really natural. And I like that the wand or... The stick is just really narrow, so it's really easy to get like a very precise um, application. And I heard someone, I heard someone else on YouTube say that Fenty is getting rid of them, which is a shame because when Fenty first launched, I remember these were so great and everyone was going crazy for them. Um, but. You know, that's just how times go. Sometimes they just have something new coming out. I know that the Fenty uh, brand has the the compacts of the cream product, so that's probably just going to take over. But anyways, I love this one. And when I run out, I'll probably get the same Fenty, but in the little compact. Okay, cream blush. Same idea as the cream uh, bronzers. I haven't had a super ton of experience with different ones. So I'll, I'll just talk about the ones that I know and the ones I can recommend or not. Um, so the honorable mention is going to be the Glossier Clad Paint. That's the one I'm going to use today. Um, I just like that these are really easy to use. I like that you, you can... I like that you can be heavy-handed or... Oops! <laughs> heavy -handed, or light-handed with them really easily. I have on the pinky one and the peachy one. The peachy is beam, the pinky is puff. However, something about this formula, I, just like I was saying with the milk uh, baked bronzer and the stick, I've had these for too long. <laughs> I just have had them for a point where it's like, man, I should be running out of this already and I'm not, which is great for like, you know, cost, wise it makes you feel like you're getting all your money's worth but I'm like this is only supposed to be good for six months once opened and I think I've had these for two years at this point I went to the Glossier store with my sisters two summers ago and I'm just like when will you end and I don't know I guess that's just a personal problem <laughs> but I love that they look really soft they have a little bit of a glow you can set them with a powder you can add more um, I was really tempted at one point to pick up more colors and then I thought 
no because I'm gonna have them forever if I get any more so I'm very hesitant to buy another color of these I think that maybe just a cream thing and that's great but cream just doesn't have the preservatives like powder does so it's just it's not gonna last it's gonna go bad and I don't have enough face for that much cream product so anyway so those are my honorable mentions Oh, I guess my other honorable mention would be the nude sticks. I have one tucked away. I like that it's just easy to put on, easy to blend out. The color is beautiful. It has a shine to it. Um, on one end, it's the stick of the cream, and on the other end is a little brush if you wanted to brush it. Um, and I actually, I could not think of a single cream blush that I really dislike, so I don't really have one from that category. Favorite one, I don't have any more. It used to be in my professional kit. Um, was the RCMA cream blush and that came in a palette of like a four different color selection um, and that eventually did expire so I, I just threw it out because it you know I wasn't using it on me I just loved it for my clients things like that um, and I would I would rebuy it absolutely I just feel like it was the perfect amount of pigment and selection that it worked with everything for everyone for all tones, for all occasions. So I would recommend that one for sure. Setting powder. Two honorable mentions. The first one is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. That one I think is really great. I think it has a little bit of color. Oh. <laughs> it has a little bit of color to it. It's very fine. It can be great for all over the face or just where you get a little oily. Um, it being a loose powder by nature, it gets really, really, really messy. Um, but there's so much product in there that will last you so long that I think it's such a great deal for such a low price. So I recommend that one. Um, my other recommendation would be the RCMA Loose Powder. That one I had in my kit as well. It, it was one of those things, again, it's so universal. It would go great on fair skin, mid-tone skin, dark skin, um, oily skin, dry skin, um, just a touch or just really heavy. It, it was so universal and just like other powders you know it it would really last a long time both the material and also on the skin so I would rebuy that one again and I would also tell others to buy it and I think the cost is something like ten dollars twelve dollars and you get enough to last basically a year if you're just a common makeup user um, my least favorite one I've tried is the super goop SPF setting powder Oh man, I used to recommend that one to customers all the time because they wanted something that was like on the go, kind of. Uh, oh, speck of glitter. If they wanted something that was on the go and something that was um, like in a control shine throughout the day, I'd recommend it. And so what did I do? I was like, oh, I, I recommend this so much, I'm gonna buy it for myself. and. When I ended up buying it, I realized that the SPF doesn't actually protect you all over like a regular sunscreen does because it's in a little powder like brush applicator that you shake and you're basically hoping that the powder gets all over the face when in reality you can't be sure because it's translucent or slightly tinted so you can't be sure if you got all over the, the forehead and all over the cheeks. And so what ended up happening was I was getting a little sunburned thinking like, oh yeah, I've got my SPF on and I didn't. So don't recommend that one. Uh, and in fact, as a powder, it's quite chalky and it's quite white. Um, I just overall not happy with that one. Okay. And for my favorite setting powder, I would say it is, I just have a teensy one that I got as like a free sample. This one is a cosmetics by by pores in the pressed um i used to have a full size in my kit as well and this is just the easiest powder to go from like a you know a glistening face to a smooth and matte face without looking dry without looking thick and heavy um i have accidentally gone too <laughs> too ham with this and it will get a little cracky looking but like if you use like a little puff or something, I feel like it just disperses the right amount. Um, I, I don't know, this is perfect for everyday and special occasions. 
and I think once I've gone through all of my setting powders I will definitely repurchase this one in a regular size um, just so I know that I have it all the time. My phone was just getting a little hot so I, while I was killing time I just added little wings to my eyeliner and a little bit more of that inner corner color. So anyways back to the list. So next up is powder blush. So I know I already have enough blush. Well, maybe it's hard to see on camera, but in person it, it looks apparent. But I'm going to go in with some more blush because I can. Um, okay, so my honorable mentions. First one is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blushes. I think those are just really easy to use. Really light-handed or heavy-handed users can use it and still get a really beautiful effect. Some people would tell me that they didn't like them because they maybe didn't last very long throughout the day, but on me, I always found them to be just the right amount of blush. Um, <laughs> um, the next honorable mention would be the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes. Those are really special. Um, each of the blushes were swirled in the pan uniquely from one another, and it was part blush, part highlight in one. So you would, you know, swirl your brush in there and you would get just a really beautiful, luminous glow on your cheek. Um, someone like me with like some texture in the skin on the cheeks, it's not the most flattering. So I think for me, it just wasn't something I could see myself rebuying for the rest of my life, but I still think that as a blush in general, they're really lovely. Expensive though, for sure. My least favorite blushes are probably an unpopular opinion, but the Benefit blushes that come in like little boxes, they just didn't, they didn't do anything for me. They, they were basic. They were fine. Some of them had a smell to them that I didn't love. And I thought, I just thought, you know, I could do better when it comes to a blush. So, meh. However, my favorite blush, I would say, are actually the ones that I have um, recently acquired into my collection. Do, 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 do. My little uh, Shy Bear uh, blushes. These have been just really fun for me. I love that they can really give a lot of impact to the face without needing a lot of product. They're so smooth looking. Um, they're so affordable and they're just really cute to look at. So really happy with these. Would highly recommend these. Um, and I, I kind of want to get all the colors, honestly, at this point. <laughs> Next category is powder bronzer. Um, my first honorable mention is the Smashbox Duo. Um, it comes with a really great powder bronzer and powder contour. And I feel like that bronzer always looked really soft and natural on me. The one that I would recommend and even possibly rebuy if I ever run out of the ones I currently have um, would be from Physicians Formula. I think I think those smell really great. A lot of people either hate them or love them. It's kind of like that coconutty smell. Um, I just find that those are really buttery and easy to use. It's a little too easy to get heavy-handed with them but so long as you like you know played with them and realized how much pigmentation you want um that I think they can really be pretty um for my least favorite I would have to say the Anastasia Beverly Hills bronzers that launched maybe four years ago at this point the colors just were not right and I always looked patchy every time I applied it and I just I can't I couldn't recommend them and I, I wouldn't look into them personally. Um, however, my favorite is it right here actually. <laughs> um, so this is actually a mini size of the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder just in the medium tone <laughs> or I think it's like the medium to dark medium tan. Um, I was gifted this, I think, by accident because I was probably supposed to get the translucent one in, I think, like, the traditional, like, the light tone, and I was given this one, and so when I got it, I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? And I didn't use it at all. 
until I was depotting all of my things and I was like you know what let me try this as a bronzer and I ended up loving it I just feel like it gives the perfect amount of warmth and it's very light looking and I can build it up but it, it just it's just right for me and you can see you know it it looks a little orange but it translates to a nice warmth to like my fair reddish skin so that's my favorite for powder contour now don't mind me with all of my products on my face um my first honorable mention would be in that smashbox duo that has the bronzer it also has a contour that to me was such a beautiful contour i still have it it's just it's a little too dark for me these days but i still really love that it looked like a true shadow and not a bronze um i also have to mention the kat von d um, shade and light palette it had like you know the three brightening colors and three contouring bronzing colors and the lightest color that was my very 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 first introduction to a powder contour that looked really good that looked like it was really you know chiseling my face and I, I don't have Kat Von D products for face anymore um, I think over time I've just gotten rid of them um, but now I know they have like little individuals with the different skin tones, so I still think it's really good, I imagine. And for my least favorite recommendation, or my least favorite, I would have to say the Hoola from Benefit. I know a lot of people consider it to be a bronzer, but I, I just feel like when I try to use it, it was far too deep on me, and so it, it kind of looked like a shadow, and it just, it just wasn't the right color. <laughs> I know it. At this point they have like um they have like a, a hula light um a cocoa they have like you know different tones in it now but i i just can't imagine using that as like a contour like so many people i knew did so that's that now my favorite one would have to be the misha cotton contour in the color smoked hazel um i've depotted it and it it kind of looks just like a, a light brown and it, it is when I don't have on so much uh, dang blush it's a little bit easier to see on my skin tone I just find that it's the perfect contour it's very easy to apply very easy to build up and doesn't look like you're you know you're faking it so I love that okay on to highlighter um, for the cream highlighter category I'm not gonna put it on because I have so much powder on at the moment um, my first honorable mention is the ColourPop. This is their Super Shock Cheek in the shade Flexitarian. Just has this like really beautiful metallic finish without any glitter effect, uh, flex. And this is one of those things that's like, I've had this for a long time, but I really love it. And so I'm just going to keep holding on to it. <laughs> um, also I would love to mention the... Something I never bought but I used before several times in store because I couldn't bring myself to buy it was the Seate London. Um, it was a tube that you twisted up and it was just a clear balm. And so you would like take a little off and tap it on and it just gave you like a wet reflection. It wasn't metallic. It wasn't glitter. It wasn't anything like that. It was just like a wet balm and it was so pretty and I would probably buy it now. Um, just because my taste in makeup has changed from how it used to be, but love that one. Um, my least favorite has has to be the Cover FX Custom Glitter Drops. I bought them when they were on a sale long, long time ago, and I threw them in the garbage because time after time after time, they let me down. They were a liquid formula. You would shake, shake, shake. You would twist up, open the dropper. You'd put some on the back of your hand, and then you would apply with your hand. Unlike the Cover FX, I think, custom enhancing drops that were like a metallic glow, these were glitter, and so they were really beautiful in their own glittery way, but something about the formula would always remove my makeup, and it was such a disaster convincing myself, like, oh, maybe I just did it wrong, and no matter what I would do, it would look terrible, so my least favorite I've ever used. Um, and on to my favorite, I would have to say the Charlotte Tilbury, uh, the Beauty Light Wands, uh, 
these ones. <laughs> these are in the same exact packaging as that contour one that I dislike, but these are so phenomenally beautiful. They are re metallic, reflective, they're just luscious. Um, they're, uh, I will have to say they're a little too dark for my skin. I think that there's one more color that would probably be a perfect shade for me. These I used to use on clients um, for a very natural glow and then I ended up just keeping them for my personal collection because they're just, you know, so beautiful that I, I love that formula so much. Okay, on to powder highlight. My first honorable mention will be Ofer Cosmetics highlighters. Um, I had this little kit from them, or rather like palette. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Anyways, this palette is so beautiful. The formula is so beautiful on the skin, very metallic, very rich in saturation. Um, I will say sometimes it can look a little chunky on my skin because maybe I just get a little heavy handed, but these are really, really delicious on any part of your face. Um, another one I, I went through and just, you know, looked through products that exist uh, online and I was reminded about the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Highlight Face Powders. I used to have one, I think when I was like 20, I, I was gifted one by a friend and it was so beautiful. It just looked so effortlessly like light and glowy and it didn't look like glitter or chunky. I would consider buying them again today if I if I ran out of highlighter I'd be like mm, those are really good the least favorite one I've tried is from elf it was the baked highlighter in kind of like a pearl shade it just it didn't show up it didn't look good it didn't look like highlighter it kind of just looked like eyeshadow had like fallen on my cheek and looked a little like spread out it was very inexpensive and I had higher hopes but it didn't work out very good and I look white Um, and then for my favorite one, I'd have to say is from Becca Cosmetics. This is my champagne pop. And I know I was talking about Jaclyn Hill <laughs> earlier, but this one I just feel like has really just lasted through time. Um, I think if I have like troubled skin, if I have smooth skin, if I have light skin, if I have, you know, a tan skin, <laughs> this just always looks good. And it always just makes me feel good. And I know Becca's going out of business later this year. And a part of me was like, no. Um, another part of me was like, well, I am going to have this forever. Because I've been using this one pan for so long that I, I truly, truly at this point don't think I will ever run out of it. And I've decided I'm not going to make any like hurried purchases thinking like, oh, I'll never have one again. Like, I, I'm confident this will last me a long time. So my totally favorite shade, formula, everything, would gift it, would rebuy it if I, if it existed years from now. Absolutely. Okay, next in my routine is setting spray. Honorable mentions. First one is the Cover FX, the High Performance Setting Spray 24 Hour Wear. I will say that this really does prolong the wear of makeup that normally doesn't last very long. 24 hours, I can't say I haven't worn makeup for a duration of 24 hours straight wearing this setting spray. Because it does ensure longevity so well, it kind of creates this like sticky, drying t effect to the skin once you've sprayed it. And it really does feel like your face is kind of glued to your face. Um, I don't think I will repurchase this item, but I think I, I'm really glad that I have it for days when I know I need everything to stay right where I want it without any budge. Um, the app, the, the spray could use some work. It kind of like dribbles down and if you don't get it, just right you will kind of have a splotch so it, it takes a little bit of practice but I think because it does work so well at making makeup last um, I do recommend it 
getting really dark all of a sudden. Um, okay, another honorable mention would have to be the e.l.f. dewy coconut mist. I feel like I've used this so many times and I, it looks like I've used so little. This is, I would say, really good at making your your like skin makeup kind of melt together. I like reaching for this when maybe like my powder and my foundation, like for some reason the two don't agree and so I'll mist this generously and they kind of fuse better together than without it. So I like this for just enhancing um, like a dewier effect just as the name says. <laughs> my least favorite spray is a very unknown product probably because no one liked it. <laughs> It's probably really old at this point, and I'm fairly certain it still exists. It's from the brand Glam Glow, and it's called the Glow Setter Makeup Setting Spray. And Glam Glow is a skincare brand, and yet they came out with a setting spray for makeup. And the idea was kind of ahead of its time because it was a, a supposed to be a glowy spray um, when a lot of people were not really into that effect quite yet. And the thing I hated the most about it was the scent. They purposely were advertising it to smell like this really incredible, beautiful, um, like candy smell. And it just didn't translate. It just was a little too sickening. Where if I had tried it, it just smelled like I'd, I'd put on like a baby perfume, like a candy baby perfume. And it would just, it was like I was wearing perfume, but it was all over my face. Um, uh, I, it just, it, uh, I just have flashbacks. <laughs> I think for this look, I'm going to go with my coconut one. Mm, and I love coconut, so I really like this smell. Okay, eyebrow pencil. Um, I have tried a handful of eyebrow pencils. Um, I think for a long time when bolder brows were more popular, I did not use a brow pencil because it would take ages to get a bold brow with a pencil, so it didn't make much sense. Um, anyway, so since since that, those days, I have dabbled with more pencils. Um, one of my honorable mentions is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I liked it because it had a great shade range, great tones to the colors. There was like, at least for like the blonde category, I remember very vividly like how pleased I was. There was a blonde, like a neutral blonde, a cool toned blonde, and then a warm toned blonde, which is really rare when it comes to brow products. There's usually like a blonde, or if there isn't, there's a taupe. <laughs> and usually one of those works but I think I think in like you know 10 years ago maybe even five years ago those color choices weren't really there and so I kind of had to deal with a dark blonde brow for a long time and then I think I just thought for a long time that's all there was so that's what I have to do um until I found others of course but I highly recommend that benefit one Applicator is very precise, great for precision, um, costly, and you're going to run out of it fast, but very good. Next recommendation is the Urban Decay, the Brow Blade. Um, this one was really cool when it came out because on one end it was a fine point uh, pencil that you could twist up, and on the other side was a felt tip liquid. And that one was supposed to be kind of for like a a brow hair effect, which kind of came into style these last couple of years. Um, where like if you had no hairs in the front, you could like paint them onto the skin essentially. Anyways, I liked the colors. I loved the formula. Um, again, a little too expensive and you would run out of it quickly, but really great. As for my least favorite brow pencil, it would have to be the Lancome brow shaping powdery pencil just it was just a very antiquated formula very powdery as it's called 
um, wouldn't adhere well to hair. I think it was better for someone who maybe had like a lot more bald spots or maybe just very, very faint um, hair growth. I just wanted a fine line. Um, the color range, I think there were four colors and the taupe or the blonde, I remember being very warm. So it looked like I had red eyebrows and it, it just, it was just old fashioned, I guess. Um, and then as for my favorite one, of course, it's the one that I just used. It's the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil. I just really, really like this one. I like that it's a little waxy, so it adheres to the hairs. It gives a little fullness. The applicator isn't too thick or too fine. And the color for me is what I prefer at being kind of like a cool tone blonde. So really like this one. Okay, as for eyebrow tinted gel... I have tried many, many, many brow tinted gels. They are my favorite form of eyebrow filling. And so much like foundation, I've kind of over the years been on a hunt for the best. And um, I think it takes a lot for me to like one because it needs to be the right color, the right texture, and the right hold. And um, and it can't be too expensive because I think an eyebrow tinted gel is one of the products I go through the quickest in my, you know, routine. Um, and so honorable mention, first one is the Benefit Tinted Brow Gel. Um, that one was one I was hooked on for years. Like I wouldn't buy an, any other one except for that one. And I think my mistake was that I was buying too dark of a color, so it just, it didn't look right on me, and you, you don't get very much product in it, so I was going through it way too quickly, and on top of that, it wasn't holding my hair in place, it was just giving me thickness, and so as much as I liked it, I, I learned that, oh, if I like this, I might like the same formula idea from other brands, so I kind of kept going from there. Um, the other honorable mention is the Glossier Boy Brow. I think if Glossier was like an in-store brand, that would probably be my favorite brow gel because the color is right, the hold is right, and the actual product just lasts a long time. Um, but it's it's harder for me to to get Glossier like, oh, I need to buy this you know, every month or something like that. So I kind of moved on from that one. My least favorite one, I would have to say, is the Maybelline Tattoo Brow Gel. That one is an absolute mess. <laughs> that one is like, it's it almost is like a, it's a kind of a tube like this, but you pull out the wand and it's not like a spoolie. It almost looks like a lip gloss applicator and you're supposed to put that in your brows and it's like pure pigment of brown. Oh man, I just remember disasters wearing that one. Um, the trick was using like a brush to go in and like apply it to the brows, which was such a pain. The color wasn't good and it was just, it just wasn't my favorite. So I don't recommend that one. And of course my favorite is the e.l.f. Brow Wow to me gives me just the fullness I'm looking for. The color looks, you know, just like an enhanced, oh, it's raining, an enhanced blonde. It's not too dark. Um, I like that it looks like I have little hairs still, but it still gives like a fullness to my brow shape. And so that to me is a successful brow product. And just like the pencil, it's only $3. And it got a little cold, so I went to go grab a jacket or a sweater rather. Okay, moving on, clear brow gel. Um, I have actually not tried that many eyebrow gels because I have found that when I do have one, it takes me ages to go through it. And so I just haven't gotten around to trying like a spread of different ones. Um, so an honorable mention I will have to say is the Sephora Collection brand eyebrow gel. I feel like it's very comparable in formula to some of the higher end brands and it's really really affordable um it is however in a smaller tube so maybe if someone was using a lot of it it might 
run out a little bit more quickly. Um, but that one I always thought was really good and would recommend it. The other one I would say is from Urban Decay. It's just their clear brow gel. Again, very similar to a lot of other ones I've tried. Um, a little bit more on the expensive side just because it's more of a prestigious brand. Um, but for me, that one holds hairs in place just fine. And I actually don't really have a least favorite one. I've never encountered a clear brow gel that I've hated. And that could just be because I have very manipulatable uh, brow hair. So they're just, whatever I put them on, put on them, they just stay where I want. With the exception of like one little droopy hair every once in a while. Um, however, <laughs> my favorite one I would have to say is the Anastasia Beverly Hills, the clear brow gel. Um, this one I had actually just purchased for my kit before I stopped uh, doing services. So I decided just to keep it for myself and I've just been using it through until it's gone. Um, it's a little more expensive for something that I can find with something more average, I'm sure, but it works great. It just, it doesn't feel too thick or textured. It holds all the hairs and it's just very easy. So I like it. On to mascara. The one we've all been waiting. <laughs> um, okay, so I have several to mention in this category, and these are all, the ones that are my honorable mentions are all mascaras that if I had, you know, a gift card for it, for that brand, I would instantly buy these products from them because I know they work, work really well. Their formulas and brush heads are what I like, and... I would refer my friends to them as well. So here they are. Um, the Marc Jacobs uh, Velvet Noir Mascara. Beautiful. The Benefit Bad Gal Bang. Beautiful. <laughs> the Lancome Monsieur Big. The Dior Pump and Go. The Too Faced Damn Girl Mascara. The Urban Decay Perversion. And those are all my honorable mentions. I don't want to go too in depth because I, I find that mascaras can be a little bit more personal. I personally like mascaras that are a little bit more wet. Um, and I like the effect to be long and thick and not too clumpy. Um, and so all these mascaras in different ways give me what I look for and that's why I love them. Now I have two to mention that I really, really dislike would never repurchase and would not recommend. The first one being the ColourPop Mascara. That one I just thought was abysmal. It it made my eyebrows, eyebrows, my eyelashes look short and clumpy and it just, it was not good um, in my opinion. <clears throat> the other one is from Hourglass, the opposite spectrum. Um, this one was their Caution Extreme Lashes Mascara. The wand was was standard. I don't remember it being too different, but the effect was, again, very clumped, very short, and it just didn't enhance my eyes, so. Now, when it comes to favorites, I honestly, I couldn't decide. I was telling my friend Adri the other day that like, I feel like I'm still on the hunt for the best mascara out there, and Unlike foundations that can take ages to go through, I don't feel as guilty trying new uh, mascaras when I finish the ones I'm using. So my favorite at the moment, I will say, is the Thrive Cosmetics that I featured in my last mas mascara in my last video. What I like about it is that it's defining and lengthening, and it makes my eyes more noticeable. Um, it doesn't take a lot of effort to make my eyes just look better, I guess. And I think also when it does come to removal, like that is something that I still am conscious about. Um, like I mentioned with the Marc Jacobs liner earlier, I don't want something that is going to make me dread removing my makeup at the end of the night. 
that's that's not fun for me. Makeup should be fun in general. And if I'm, you know, at the bathroom sink for 20 minutes trying to just take off one part of my makeup, at that point it's just a chore and I don't want that. And so I think coming back to the Thrive Mascara, I just love that I can just splash water on my lashes and it all just comes off. And I don't need to be rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And so that to me is just a factor that I'm looking for now that I wasn't always looking for throughout my mascara journey. Before I get into lips, I'm just gonna go back into my lower lash line and just do a little, a little something there. Now on to lips. Okay, when it comes to lip liner, boop, boop, boop. Um, I have two honorable mentions. Uh, first, I would say the ColourPop lip liners I think are really, really great. And I think if you get the right colors, they could be like your everyday lip liners. They're really affordable um, and they last a really good amount of time on the lips. They could be like your whole lipstick or they could just be the line. Um, I also really enjoy the Buxom Plump, the Plump Line Lip Liner. They're a little bit of a thicker, uh, like a thicker stick, and they have almost like a cooling effect when you put them on, but I just remember them, I haven't had them in a long time, but they just sort of enhance every lip product you use, and they have a beautiful range of colors in the pencils. Um, my least favorite would have to be the lip liners from Morphe. I think I only have bought one once ever. It came in like a lip set and I got it because it was supposed to be like a nude lip set with like the perfect lip liner, lipstick, and gloss like combined. So you didn't have to like pick three different products. It just came all together. And the lip liner was so stiff and it took so much pressure to get any color that it just, it, it was, it wasn't fun. It was uncomfortable in a way. And so I don't recommend those. I wouldn't buy those again, personally. Um, and for my favorite, I'd have to say it's the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. Um, this is in the color Pillow Talk. Um, I have just found that that this lip liner goes with so many of my favorite lipsticks and lip glosses and the formula is just so easy to put on, easy to put on all over. Okay, my phone stopped recording on its own accord, I guess because I'm running out of storage space on my phone, so I'm gonna try to wrap up these last categories. Um, but here is what the Charlotte Tilbury lip liner looks like all over as a lipstick kind of thing. As far as liquid lipstick goes, my two honorable mentions would be Kat Von D and Smashbox uh, liquid lipsticks. Um, I feel like they're both super long lasting, very matte, very transfer proof until like, you know, you eat an oily product. Um, my favorite formula would have to be from Ofra Cosmetic. Uh, today I'm going to put on the color Sunny Belle. I was really lucky. I, I won an Ofra, gif an Ofra giveaway last year. That was really fun. Um, I think I, I think I won $250 to shop on Ofra.com and that was like the thrill of a lifetime basically. And so I picked up a ton of stuff, but my favorite things were the lip line or the liquid lipsticks. I had to delete some, some files off my phone to make way for storage. So I'm gonna try really, really fast to finish. <laughs> so I put on some of that um, Ofra Cosmetics liquid lipstick on. For my favorite, just classic lipsticks, I love Bite Beauty's formula and Laura Mercier's formula. My favorite, uh, my least favorite would have to be ones from Milani. They stink, they're a little too easy to come off and I just don't want them. And my favorite would have to be, ah, I don't have it right here, but from Charlotte Tilbury, they're um, just like their classic tube of lipsticks, beautiful. For lip gloss, my favorites. I really love Buxom's formula, Dior's formulas. 
Um, my least favorite is Morphe, again, with that little lip set I got. Disgusting. Really disliked it. Gummy. Ugh, not good. My favorite is from Glossier. I'm going to put that one on really fast, as fast as I can be. Mm -mm -mm. I love that it just kind of feels like um, a lacquer. It just gives this incredible shine. It feels like it's like a protective coat of gloss on my lips, and I love that. And I've been working on that one for two years, practically, just like those cream blushes. I can't believe it. Okay, let me quickly undo my hair so I can be finally gotten ready. Okay, my friends, thank you so much for spending time with me, listening to me chat forever about just my favorite things that make me happy when it comes to makeup. Uh, videos that are coming soon. I have a video planned for um, my favorite non-makeup things that are kind of random and things that make me happy that are not makeup related. And I'm also planning on um, makeup that's on my wish list. So makeup I've never tried before but that I've been really wanting to buy and I just haven't bought yet. So um, let me know if you have any other things that you want to see from me. Let me know if there was anything in this video that, you know, tantalized your senses and makes you want to check it out too. So um, I hope you take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.